Have you tried training methods that just didn't work? Do you feel that your pet is not getting his or her nutritional needs met? Are illnesses and bad behavior your daily norm? You're going to want to join me on the Pet Parenting Reset, where you'll hear interesting and informative interviews and get solutions to all your pet problems. I'm your host, Jessica L. Fisher. Well, hello and welcome back to the Pet Parenting Reset. Today we're talking about aggression in dogs, specifically male dogs that are not neutered. This is a very, very common myth. I say it's a myth uh, based on the truth as I know it. And this is actually a topic that I was very interested in doing on the podcast Anyway, like I have, you know, a list of all these ideas that I want to do on the podcast. And as I get to them, you know, doing more research and, and bringing information to you. And I happened to get an email from Dr. Will Falconer the other day that talked about just this thing. And I thought it was really interesting getting a veterinarian's uh, input on this versus dog training, dog training, dog trainer input on this. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of especially alpha, alpha based trainers or fear pain based trainers, trainers that use prongs and shock collars and electronic collars. There is a difference in electronic collars and electric collars, shock collars. Um, However, I don't, don't, use either. I don't think either are necessary or useful. Um, they only evoke fear and pain. So anyway, (laughs) these are the types of trainers in general that I think probably started this myth of aggression in dogs that are not neutered. Now, if you remember back, it hasn't been that long, a few weeks that we did an episode on the podcast about why I'm not a huge fan of spaying and neutering animals. And if you didn't listen to that podcast, I highly recommend you go back and listen to it because it's not that I don't want to curb quote unquote overpopulation in our pets. Um, I don't really know that we have an overpopulation problem. I think we have a responsible human problem, but that aside, it is much better for our pets to do procedures that are more that that are you know hysterectomies and vasectomies because this is just like a cliff's notes of that episode because these uh, organs that we remove in a spay and a neuter uh, whether it's the ovaries or the testes depending on if it's a male or a female and this is true with dogs and cats but um, specifically we're you know in this episode we're talking about dogs. We're removing hormone secreting organs from the body and we're removing these hormone secreting organs in most animals at very, very young ages. So think about what the lack of these hormone, the the hormones themselves are doing on the body. It's not awesome. Now, let's get back to why some of the reasons. So some of the reasons why neutering and aggression are not necessarily correlated. And instead, what could be the correlation that most people are overlooking? So this is the email that I got from Dr. Will Falconer. If you're not familiar with Dr. Will Falconer, um, he is a homeopathic veterinarian. He's retired, but he still does a lot of content. So he's, he's retired from practicing, but not from educating, <laughs> basically. And he has, it's Vital Animal. I think it's .com, vitalanimal.com. Vital Animal, The Natural Path, where he is putting out loads of content. He has courses. I, 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 I just, I can't recommend him enough. Anyway. This particular email, April 17th, 2022, does testicle, the first thing he talks about in this email, um, does testicle removal make your dog mellow? Well, in my experience, that answer is no. Um, What I will say is that there is obviously a lack of hormones being produced in the body because we've removed the testicles. 
But that's not necessarily related to aggression at all. Um, there are plenty of animals in the wild that are not neutered. And, and I, I say animals, but let's just narrow it down. Wolves, right? Let's talk about wolves. Let's talk about wild dogs. They're not aggressive for the sake of being aggressive because they have their testicles. No, not at all. But let's talk. Let's. I'm just going to read you the email or this part of the email from Dr. Falconer. He says, here's an all too common story shared by one of his students. And here's the story. Hi, I have a dog that got a rabies vax at 18 months, first and only. It has changed him over the last five months. He is also intact and coming of age. So my current vet thinks it's that emphasis there that my current vet. Anyway, we've tried three homeopathic remedies. In some aspects, he improved, and in others, he is picking up more symptoms. Here are the symptoms. Hypersexual, aggressive towards dogs he used to play with, fearful, pacing, and nervous, less cuddly, and he drools when he sees food. So that is the experience from the the message from his student. Here's what Dr. Will Falconer says. Do I have any insights? I too have seen cases of rabies symptoms in rabies vaccinated animals repeatedly and heard many more secondhand stories like Lisa's. So basically what he's saying is a lot of these symptoms are similar symptoms to the actual rabies virus. Not saying that this dog has rabies, but the vaccination could be causing some of these symptoms. I digress. Let's get back to what Dr. Will Falconer is saying. The most striking incrimination of rabies vaccine as a potential cause comes from repeated observations among homeopathic vet. We've been seeing and discussing this for decades. Rabies vaccination is highly correlated with those animals who changed behaviors since their shot. Correlation? Yes. Causation? It seems likely, as the symptoms match so closely between the rabies vaccinated and the actual rabid animal, and they, quote unquote, weren't that way before the rabies vaccine made its entrance into their body. For more on this connection, aka rabies vaccinosis, please join, and he he has a link to his free rabies short course. I actually highly recommend his rabies short course. I took it. I also, after I took it, paid for the upgraded version of the course. It's incredible. I highly recommend it to everyone. Again, I digress. In this case, I shared my concerns with his student regarding neutering from research and real world experience. Um, and he actually has a blog post where he wrote, wrote about it at vitalanimal.com slash neutering. While all sorts of things go wrong when you remove the hormone factories, be they ovaries or testicles, one thing seemed clear from a large research study having to do with dog aggression, particularly aggression in neutered males. And here's a quote from the study. This large comprehensive study of the relationships between gonadectomy, which is a neuter, and aggressive behavior in dogs demonstrates that when the many factors affecting aggressive behavior are considered, there is no evidence that gonadectomy at any age alters aggressive behavior towards familiar people or dogs, and there is only a minimal increase in aggression toward strangers. So this research study, in case you want to look it up, is from Frontiers in Veterinary Science. It was published February 26, 2018. Um, It is called Aggression Towards Familiar People, Strangers, and Conspecifics in Gonadectomized and Intact Dogs. It is by Parveen Farhoudi, Indika, I'm going to get this name wrong, Malawara Cheech, Patrick Tarwater, James Serpel, Deborah Duffy, and Chris Zink. So you can actually look this up all on your own. Again, it was published in Frontiers of Veterinary Science, February 2018. And that is where that quote came from. In some other studies, aggression actually got worse. One showed neutered male dogs were twice as likely to bite as intact males in a Canadian study. That Canadian study, if you want to look it up, was by Guy, G-U-Y, et al., which means there were more people in the study, um, in 2001. 
So if you're considering neutering or worse, admonish to do it because it will stop or prevent male aggression, this is another chance to take a breath, pause, and say, let me think this through carefully. I'll get back to you, doctor. So not only are these studies saying, no, there, there actually is no correlation or causation to be found when considering getting a neuter for your dog, which they they term a gonadectomy because that's the more technical term for it, um, and, and aggression. There, there just isn't anything. So that's that's pretty much it. Long story short, um, I don't actually see a whole lot of correlation in any of the animals that I have ever dealt with. Um, the ones that are intact, I don't see additional aggression whatsoever in, in these animals versus animals that are no, no longer intact, that have been neutered or spayed. Um, I, again, highly recommend you go back to the episode a few weeks back uh, where we talked about not spaying and neutering and instead doing a vasectomy or a hysterectomy because this is going to be much, much easier on the body. We're going to leave those hormone-producing organs intact uh, so those hormones can, can continue to produce in the body and make sure that your animal is, you know, living their happiest, healthiest life and thriving because that is how nature intended. <laughs> Instead, what this particular veterinarian, Dr. Will Falconer, is saying is that there are actually lots of correlation and what there's, what he is saying is possible causation between rabies vaccinations and increased aggression because that's actually, these are symptoms of rabies. Uh, in animals. So while your dog may not actually get full-blown rabies, meaning they're not going to die of the virus because of the vaccine, uh, rabies vaccinosis is very, very real. If you've never heard the term vaccinosis before, I've done some deep dives on that on Patreon. Uh, if you would like to join us on Patreon, I I would love to see you over there. You can join for as little as a dollar a month. It helps me to continue to bring content like this to you and other pet parents like you. So go to patreon.com slash Jessica Fisher, or you can just go to patreon.com and type in either the Pet Parenting Reset or my name, Jessica Fisher, to pull it up. You can also go to the petparentingreset.com and right there at the top of the page in the navigation bar, there is a link to Patreon. Uh, again, you can join for as little as a dollar a month. You get additional content over there behind the scenes, lots of great stuff, reminders, yada, yada, all the things, and you actually get the content you sign up for, which is a pretty novel idea. So with that, I'm going to end today's podcast. Thank you so much for being here. We have another great podcast next week. If you're not already following the podcast, make sure you are following. If you haven't rated the podcast yet, I hope you do so. Um, giving a five-star review helps other pet parents to be able to find content like this because when uh, podcasts like this or any podcast gets good reviews, then that wherever you listen to your podcast, be it Apple or Spotify or Google or wherever, they push that content out to other people and suggest it and say, hey, other people like you like this. So that's a great way to get this content out to more and more pet parents. With that, I'm going to end today's podcast. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. Give your pets some extra love from me. Until next time, bye guys. Oh, oh.